Continuing our coverage of Nevada football, hiring its next leader in Jeff Choate. He spent four years at Montana State, and no reporter was closer to his Bobcat teams than Coulter Nuanez. He is the co-founder of Skyline Sports, which, which covers all things Big Sky Athletics, but you are located in the Treasure State. Coulter, thanks so much for joining NSN tonight. i got to ask you right away, what does Nevada have in Jeff Choate? Oh, man, I'm so excited for you guys. You guys have one of the most charismatic and energetic coaches that I've ever been around. I mean, Choate certainly, he's not without flaw. I mean, everybody has flaw, but he is as passionate and as uh, steadfast of a leader as I've ever been around. And, and from your seat, Mike, you're going to love this guy because he is a sound bite a minute. I mean, he, he's as good of an interview as I've ever been around. So uh, I think this is something that people around Nevada, around Reno should be very happy about. Awesome to hear. We'll get some good content out of Coach Choate. Uh, what can you say about his Bobcat teams? Four years in Bozeman helped kind of rise them back to prominence. Certainly did. He took over a weird situation because Rob Ash had gotten let go, even though Rob Ash was the winningest coach in Montana State history. But Coach Ash, his program had sort of hit a peak and then was sort of on the downward decline. And people that are familiar with the Big Sky or, or the state of Montana in general, a lot of times the rivalry between Montana and Montana State is the single biggest thing on any coach's resume. And that's sort of the story of both Rob Ash and Jeff Cho. Rob Ash won 70 games and three Big Sky titles at Montana State, but he only beat the Grizzlies twice in nine matchups. Jeff Cho beat the Grizz four times in a row. And that in itself helped him build the momentum within his program. I mean, they were only four and seven year one and five and six in year two, but wins against the Grizz gave him so much momentum into each offseason. And then all of a sudden they hit this upward plane and then they were in the playoffs a couple of times, made it to the final four of the FCS playoffs for the first time since 1984 when they went in 2019. So uh, Choate certainly used the rivalry as sort of a springboard into momentum across the way but I mean if you talk about all the things he did at Montana State it's not just beating the Grizz it's not just you know several playoff wins like he had to me he fundamentally changed the entire attitude on campus because Montana had dominated Montana State so thoroughly for so long there was like this complex amongst Bobcat followers and Choate eliminated that. As Danny Sprinkle, the former head coach uh, of the basketball team there at MSU, told me, having Choate there was like when you're a kid and you're walking around the playground and you know that there's one dude who's the toughest guy on the playground, so you walk around with him because then you know the bullies aren't going to pick on you. That was like Choate. He's the guy that just leads the whole way. So from the Bobcat Athletic Complex that he helped fundraise for and build to the stadium expansion to you know the, the expansion of the quarterback club, he was as good in terms of the external stuff, the fundraising stuff, as, as any coach I've ever been around. Pretty impressive to hear, considering that was his first head coaching gig. And yes, I have heard he is known as the Grizz Killer and that he will never have to buy a drink in Bozeman ever again. That's pretty good stuff. What can you say about the product on the field and kind of the style of play from uh, Jeff Choate's teams? Well, you're definitely going to get a lot of physicality. And Choate's as good of a recruiter as I've been around as well. Their defense in 2019 was, was totally stacked. Uh, a lot of those guys didn't actually end up playing their last year at Montana State until 2021, but you know, two of them, Troy Anderson, who was a second-round pick, and Daniel Hardy, who was a seventh-round pick, they both got drafted into the NFL, and you know, both of them are still playing in the league today. And, uh, I mean, from Choate's, like, final class there, most of those guys didn't play their final year at MSU until 2021, but he put five guys in the NFL, and there's been seven guys that Choate recruited there uh, to the NFL, so he knows how to recruit big-time guys. He also is really good at maintaining relationships. So, I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I don't want to speculate too much, but I wouldn't be surprised if some guys from Austin, Texas are on, on their way to Reno in short order because he, he brought in a whole handful of guys from Washington to, to Montana State when he first got that job as well. So, uh, re recruiting is definitely one of his biggest things, but in terms of the style that they play, uh, probably going to run a little bit of a, a, a mixed front. They, they ran a lot of buck end stuff, so a guy that could put his hand down or stand up and make the front a little variable. He really likes long rangey linebackers. Um, that, that's always been a high priority of his is just length in general in recruiting. And uh, offensively, I'll actually be fascinated to see what they do. Cause I, they do, they, he has been pretty good at melding two personnel. I mean, there was certainly a ground and pound type team with a ton of quarterback run game 
but part of that was circumstantial. 2018, their starting quarterback was academically ineligible. So they threw Troy Anderson in there at quarterback because Troy Anderson is the greatest athlete in Big Sky Conference history. Even though he's an NFL linebacker, he was able to play quarterback for you know a season to get up to the playoffs somehow. But either way, I, I think run heavy, physical style, but that's the thing. is Choate's a defensive guy. He's a defensive coach. And uh, more than anything, the, the passion his teams play with are, is going to be very evident to people right away. All right. Uh, what do you remember about when he left? Because Choate left Bozeman on his own accord and kind of said there's, there's more goals out there for him, and suddenly we see him landing in Reno. What do you remember about his exit? Well, I, I think that it, in a certain way, his exit led him now to Nevada because, first of all, Choate is so high energy that he has a nearly impossible time just sitting still <laughs> you guys you guys will just be so so amazed with how much uh just i mean he's just in your face about everything all the time but that's what makes him so great and so funny but he um the year that in 2020 the big sky did not play a fall season and so they had to have like this whole fall ball session where they didn't have any games to prepare for i think that made him incredibly antsy well, then he gets an opportunity to be a finalist at boise state and he doesn't get it, and they hire Andy Avalos instead. Well, then you talk about um, – I, I think that the number one thing that he didn't get the Boise job for was because they wanted him to have more Power 5 or more, you know, FBS either head experience or coordinating experience. Choate had, Choate had been an a, a assistant at Boise State at Washington for, um, you know, at Utah State as well until he arrived at Montana State. But I think that that's what made him want to make the move to Texas because he knew how good Montana State was going to be. He knew they had a chance, and they went to the national championship the year after he left, so he was right. But I, I do think that he has been wanting to be a head coach again, and I, I know he's he's certainly had conversations about maybe where that would be. But make no mistake, he was in the mix at Boise this last time, and they didn't hire him again. And I know he's not happy about that. And so uh, he's going to come to Nevada, Reno, with a full-on vendetta against the Broncos and the rest of the Mountain West, but certainly against the Broncos. So don't be surprised if a bunch of guys at Boise State have offered. All of a sudden, they got Nevada offers. Don't be surprised if there's an assistant coach or two or three or five from Boise State staff that's on their way down to Reno. Do, do not be surprised because that's how Choate rolls. And he is as among the smartest people, not just coaches, that I've ever been around. So. Uh, pretty good day if you're in a Vatterino to, to get a dynamic hire like this. Love to hear that, and I know the Wolfpack fans do as well. Thanks so much for that awesome insight. He is Coulter Duan as SkylineSportsMT.com is the website if you want some big sky sports in your daily digest. And I have to let people know publicly, you just got married a few days ago. So congratulations to yeah. you and your bride, Coulter, and uh, thank you so much for making some time here for us. Hey, thanks so much, man. Good to see you, man, and uh, keep up the great work. All right, stay warm out there in the Treasure State, my man.